So long, man. Have a good breath. Fuck you! Hey! Help me! Thursday night, you ask the questions, DT gives you his answers. No holds barred. It's Q&A with Don Tony. This is your chance to speak your mind and be heard about anything. Q&A with Don Tony. And now, your host, Don Tony. So much for that idea that Tegan Knox would be in, on War Games. Tegan Knox. Look, I'm not smiling because it's funny. Um, look, when we talked about the last set of WWE releases, you know, I said, get used to it. Get used to it. Because WWE, see, a lot of people still don't get it. WWE, as they go along, they're realizing we don't need 150 wrestlers. We don't need 100 wrestlers. We don't need 90 wrestlers. We don't need 80. We don't need 70. All we need is the, the ones that give us the most attention, the biggest superstars, the names that everybody talks about, and that gets us going. That keeps us going. That makes us the money. People using budget cuts as their focus of conversation, it's now just clickbait and trigger words because we've talked to death as far as how business operates in the billion-dollar corporate world and stop thinking that budget cuts means financial problems. I'm not sticking up for WWE. Now, I know some of you that are tuning in right now you haven't been online the last maybe 30 minutes. You probably have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, first, I want to welcome everybody to the Q&A live stream. Now, usually tonight, we just hang out in the chat, answer some questions. Sometimes I will eat old shit just to make myself look like a goof. So tonight, you know, we'll do that, but we have a few news tidbits to get into. And a little fun later on, we have a couple of big giveaways tonight, big contest giveaways. Good luck to everybody who has entered. But let's, uh, let's talk about it. Within the last 30 minutes or so, WWE has made some more releases. Some of the names may surprise you. Some of them may not. First off, Jackson Riker. Well, I'll give you the list, and then we'll get into one by one. Jackson Riker, Shane Thorne, Drake Maverick, <clears throat> Isaiah Swerve Scott, Isaiah Swerve Scott, Ashante Adonis, Top Dalla, Tegan Knox, and John Morrison. Interesting, huh? Interesting. Of all those releases in your com in the comment section later, you can put it in the chat right now. Who of those releases surprises you the most? Because I think we could say who surprises us the least is probably the ones that have not been utilized all that much. And let's be honest, nothing against Jackson Riker, but the writing was on the wall for a very long time. You might have <clears throat> a decent backstory to a lot. He may have a great physique, but that guy, you know, unfortunately in his day and age with cancel culture and a lot of his, you know, social media wrongdoing was to his own fault, to his own fault. You know, in this day and age, you may have views that differ with others. And I agree for those who are going to say, wow, I think there's like fingerprints. <laughs> this sucks. 
I'm just for those on audio only, I'm trying to like clean my glasses without water. All right, much better, much better. Um, you know, look, we have a lot of views, and it sucks in this day and age that there's some views that you can ex you can't express because it triggers a lot of people. Um, Jackson Riker, though, I think did himself in. And yes, look, I agree. Freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of liking something that others may not. But, you know, unfortunately, when you're an entertainment company and all of your fans, supporters, backers, customers frown on some of your entertainers, you know, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. It's just the facts. It's just the facts. So, Jackson Riker being released, I don't think is a surprise to many. Shane Thorne, I don't think is a surprise to many. You know, obviously, Retribution, it didn't work out all that well. He came up with that kind of like, you know, down under gimmick. You know, looking a little bit like uh, Crocodile Dundee. And I know he paid tribute, you know, to, to, to others, but... The thing is, you know, in 2021, are you going to invest on rebuilding? They're not going to do vignettes with him by the swamp. They're not going to do what they did in the past. You come out there, and if it looks like something that they can't immediately throw on the wall, what's the sense of having them? It's going to be interesting to see how to handle main event in the near future. Get ready for the news reports about WWE making drastic changes to like main event and a few other shows, 205 Live and others. Tegan Knox, very surprised at Tegan Knox's release. Something tells me there's a little bit more going on with this. Now, can we finally put to rest now this report? or the people that insist on saying that people are being fired because they're unvaccinated. I mean, you have no proof of it. You've had wrestlers publicly say that vaccination status had nothing to do with it. You have nobody in the corporate world asking WWE about releases due to vaccination status. That's, that's the part that everybody should focus on. Forget the wrestling websites. Forget me. Forget podcasters. Forget any of us. When you see millionaires and billionaires who invest in WWE, big money, and they're not questioning it, they're not asking if it's true, they're not concerned about it, they're not curious about it, that is what matters. Not what Sammy Schmuck and Slams.com has to say about it. And yet, People still keep clickbaiting you, having discussions about something that has no basis. Why? Because another website reported it? Because a newspaper reported it? There's an old saying, two wrongs don't make a right. But people still want to bring it up, go right ahead. Maybe these releases will change some people's minds. But Tegan Knox surprises me because she never really got an opportunity. You know, I had Shotzi and Knox. It was a fun tag team. Nothing wrong with it. I mean, I think we pretty much can see that the women's tag team division, it's been very lackluster for quite some time. And look, man, I'm going to say something now that's very unpopular. And I know a lot of you deep down inside will agree with me, but would never say it publicly because it's unpopular. And I don't mean for this to sound nasty. But before... I say what I say. Big Armada with the Fadala, top dollar, run in with the super chat. Thank you very much, my friend. Unpopular opinion, says Big Armada. He'd rather see wrestlers get released so they could work elsewhere instead of wasting their careers in catering. Bravo. He gets it. He gets it. He gets it. We already talked about how much money is made on Twitch, on social media, on cameos, working the indies, getting a very, very 
loose contract with AEW. Some of these wrestlers are going to make more money outside of WWE. And they ain't all 50 years old. They're, no, they're not all over the hill. They could be back at a different time. See, welcome, welcome. And I'm not trying to get political here. But believe me when I tell you, I know I sometimes come off really, really arrogant and a little bit conceited. But I swear to you, when I say to you that no other show is going to say things like I say here, that's because they just want to go on the emotions, pull on your strings. They want you to scream at the world, the hell with WWE, the hell with John Laurinaitis, the hell with Vince McMahon. But they don't understand, you know, the actual business world and the, and the ongoings of it. Again, we don't have to agree with it, but we understand it. You look at some of these wrestlers. And WWE hires them, and then we're in COVID for two years, and it's going to be around for a couple of more years. And the economy has gotten all fucked up because of it as a result. Now, I'm not going to get into all that again because you know the deal, but again, you look at in the wrestling sense, and I brought this up before. T-shirts that used to sell for $19 is now $29. Some shirts that I treat to some with contests are $42 with shipping. You look at ticket sales. You know, I love the people that go on like these ticket websites and they show the, the price for this and the price for this. Not understanding that there are boatloads of scalpers there that bought those tickets in advance. And then you get closer and closer and closer and closer to the show and their tickets are not selling. And then the price drops. And then the price drops. And then the price drops. There was an AEW event that people were selling tickets for $2. Not because AEW was doing poor in ticket sales. It's because these scalpers grabbed them, got greedy, and at the last minute they're like, fuck, we can't make nothing. Let's make $2 instead of nothing. But you look at everything. The price of everything has gone through the roof. Let's talk about gas prices. Let's talk about plane tickets. Let's talk about hotel rooms. Let's talk about food. Let's talk about sex, baby. Think of all the expenses involved with a wrestling company. Why do you think AEW has not traveled to certain areas in the United States? Because it is too damn expensive right now. So. WWE is trying to keep record profits in the middle of a recession. This is the result of it. I guarantee you if gas prices were still $2 instead of 4 I guarantee you if uh, you know, a hotel room was $100 instead of $250, I guarantee you if a rental car was 2 and change instead of $700, and if you think I'm exaggerating, look around. You would not see some of the releases you receive. See, the budget, okay, we have this amount of money that we could use towards talent. Now we got to pull money from here because this is more expensive. Now we got to pull money from here because we can't re, uh, get back all our revenue that we lost. We have to pull money here. We have to pay out over here. We have to do this. We have to do that. So as a result, some wrestlers get re released. Why would you have wrestlers with a bullshit gimmick, sitting in catering, doing nothing, where they could actually work elsewhere? Right now, if you look at Raw, if you look at SmackDown, you know who the big players are. Look at SmackDown. You do Roman Reigns. You do the Usos. On Raw, you do Randy Orton, Riddle. You do Drew, Drew McIntyre on SmackDown. You do Big E. You do The New Day. Charlotte, Sasha, Tegan, uh, Shotzi, no longer Tegan. You look at, that's it. That's it. It's like watching a soap opera. Every week when you watch a soap opera or you watch a, you know, any TV series, you have a certain cast of characters. That's it. You might get a little cameo or an extra actor here and there, but for the most part, you got the same people every single week. That is what WWE is doing. WWE is realizing that with this 
current climate and the economy and everything going on, they do not need that crazy amount of wrestlers under their contract. I know it's a bitter pill to swallow, but again, it's smart business. You know, I love Brian Danielson. I mean, anybody that's been tuning into my shows for years knows how much I appreciate Brian Danielson, not only as a wrestler, but as a human being. But when Brian Danielson does an interview and says, I love Vince McMahon, but I hate the corporate world. And it sucks that corporations get rewarded for firing people. Well, who the fuck tells you to work for them in the first place? It's okay to take the money. But once the money is gone, suddenly corporate is evil. Come on, man. Seriously? Everybody sells out. Most people sell out. Not everybody. Most people sell out. Everything is cool when the bills are paid. You're able to buy some really wonderful items that a lot of other people can't afford. It's awesome to know that your children are financially set. It's awesome to know that if something goes wrong health-wise or you take care of your family or you buy your mom the house that she always wanted, everything is great. Then once you're no longer working for the corporate monster, suddenly it's a monster. Come on. Now, what I was going to say before that might offend some is something I've said for years. With the exception of a very small group of women, women's wrestling is not as strong and popular as it's perceived to be. Yes, a lot of it is at the creative fault of the wrestling promotions. Let's segue to something else for a moment. Kira Hogan. Kira Hogan. Excellent women's wrestler. Now did an impact wrestling. Now let's also be honest. In impact wrestling, she pretty much faced everybody that was there because impact wrestling's women's roster is not as deep as a lot of other companies. She was on a podcast with Victoria, Mickey James, and Sol Calval. And she made a couple of comments. Now, you remember yesterday when I was talking about the full gear pay-per-view buy rate and how things, words are used that are very, very deceiving? Remember that? Well, check this out from today. Kira Hogan talked about her time in Impact Wrestling, and she talked about her time in AEW. Now, if you go across the net and you look at a lot of these articles, these cut and paste articles, these websites that all copied each other, most of the websites, the title is that Kira Hogan feels lost in the shuffle in AEW. How dare she say something like that? Triggered the fuck out of the fringe element, element of AEW fans. So I'm curious. I mean... On the surface, we could say, duh, duh, look how they've used Kira Hogan. It's ridiculous how, much, how they've used Kira Hogan in AEW. It's a fucking joke, let's be honest. So I clicked the articles. I clicked the first article, I'm like, what the hell is this? I go to another website, I click their article. What the hell is this? Four websites in a row, I click the articles, and this is pretty much what they show. Now, remember the title, Kira Hogan Feels Lost in the Shuffle in AEW. When I click the article, I get this. My time and impact, I grew so much in the four years that I was there, and I still feel in my heart that I'm not done yet there because how I left, but at the end of the day, it was my choice. I love impact so much. It's such a family. I miss my sisters. I miss my family. I miss all the stories that I was involved with. And how interesting everything got and how different stories fed into different stories with these people, even though we had never, ever connected before. I just miss Impact and how much I have grown to be part of an Impact family. And it was just such a whirlwind to be part of that company. And I do miss it very, very much. Credit to Post Wrestling for that transcript. I'm reading that. I'm like, I don't see any negative shots to AEW. I had to find a Spanish website that wrote it in Espanol. 
And then I translated it and I said, aha, aha. No wonder why they didn't want to post the actual comment. This is what Keir Hogan said about AEW. I like the girls in the AEW locker room. A lot of girls, especially my girlfriend, Diamante, worked there before. I worked there, so I was backstage a lot of times helping girls do makeup because I do makeup sometimes. I have a lot of friends in the locker room. They were excited for me to come over. They're like, are you going to come over here? I want to wrestle you. I want to wrestle you like Ty Conti and Red Velvet. And, of course, one of my best friends, Big Swall, Niall Rose. And all the girls like, we want to wrestle you. I want to have a bomb match with you because I know. Yeah, I want to have a bomb-ass matches with you. So I'm here, but I feel like there's a lot of moving parts going on in AEW right now, so I feel like a lot of things are getting lost in the shuffle. And I feel like I'm one of those things. But I'm just trying to stay positive and just focus on what I can control, which is just staying ready for whenever the opportunity does present itself. And I'm excited because NWA, I'm still able to do indie bookings under my contract and do things that I can honestly do because my contract, I'm still able to work and go out and do things. I do have off, time off, and I'm able to just focus on myself and blah, 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 blah. So right away, the fringe element. Who the fuck told you to sign with AEW? Nobody forced you to go to AEW. Do you see where I'm going with this? You got these whack news reports that TNT only wants one women's match on the show. Whether it's true or it's not true, it's just a dopey, it's an excuse. It's an excuse to cover up, hey, how come we don't get more women's wrestling on Dynamite every week? How come we get like one match and a couple of promos? Sometimes we get two, but they don't get the equal airtime. Because the fact of the matter is, with the exception of a very, 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 very small group of women in wrestling, it does not draw on the same level of the way the men do. It's just a fact. I said it a long time ago, you will never, you will never, ever, for the foreseeable future, I don't even know if it'll happen in my lifetime, you will never see a regular women's wrestling TV series on cable other than maybe a very, very small promotion like WOW or something like that because, and I'm talking about the big promotions, because what happens, what happens with this investment of the women's evolution that WWE has done for the last, what, seven, eight years or whatever number of years it's been? What happens if they go ahead and say, okay, we're going to do an all-women's cable show and it draws 300,000 viewers? Now, I have no idea what the numbers. We don't even know who would be on those shows. What happens? Because everybody insists, everybody, look at all the podcasters out there that put women on their show simply because they wanted a female. They wanted a female's perspective. Sorry, I don't put a man or a woman or somebody in between simply because there are certain, you know, sex. You put somebody on because they know what they're talking about and they're good at how, what they say and they feed off the show, not simply because they have breasts and a vagina. So you have women's wrestling and I support women's wrestling. I have said for years and years and years, if the women outperform the men, I don't care for our SmackDown is all women and very few men. When they were doing Becky, Ronda, Charlotte, Becky, Ronda, Charlotte, Becky, Ronda, Charlotte, a lot of it was good. And they definitely damaged a lot of the men's division as a result. But the point is, you, you never see any of these big promotions talking about an all-women's promotion on TV, not YouTube, not YouTube, not YouTube. I'm talking about TV. Because what happens if AEW or WWE or Impact Wrestling, well, Impact Wrestling, I mean, they can't even get 80,000 viewers combined, men and women. What happens if AEW, WWE puts an all-women show on cable TV and it draws pathetic numbers? You don't think that that's a devastating emotional blow for women in wrestling? Like, wow, I guess, you know, we're not as big as we thought we were. Look, there's different types of entertainment. 
where women dominate more than men. There's different types of entertainment where men dominate over women. I'm not going to tune into a show simply because somebody has breast or doesn't have breast. I tune into the show because I want to be entertained. And you look at WWE when you say to yourself, oh, look at the women's division. It sucks. Look at the women's tag team division. It's pitiful. If they were drawing the numbers that everybody tries to claim, why would it be so horrible? Why would they would liquefy it? Why would they condense it to something almost nothing if it was such a draw? So unfortunately, those are the facts. Those are the facts. And I blame a lot of it on creative. Look at Kira Hogan. Look at her record in AEW. It's a fucking joke. Kira Hogan is a top female wrestler. Look how they use her. You got to use some of the women there, top women. And they're not utilized anywhere near what they should. Why is that? Why is that? Nobody is holding AEW back. Nobody is holding WWE back to utilize. But you again, you look at WWE, it's Becky, it's Charlotte, it's Rhea Ripley, it's Sasha. Soon it'll be Bailey. And then you throw in Shotzi. And then you throw in Carmella. And then you throw in Queen Zelina. And then you throw in this person. And that's all you need. That's all you need. Is it surprising? No, it should not be surprising. So let's get into the rest of the releases. Drake Maverick. I like that guy. He got released the first time around. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I sent him a little something as a thank you. I sent a little something to a bunch of people who were released because at that time, that was very early in COVID and money was a little bit more prevalent. That guy got, got his job back and it was a heartwarming story. But let's be honest, you know, when they first started teaming him with Killian Dane, it was a little bit fun. And then it just went south quickly. It just turned into nothing. And since then, they've been trying to plug him in little things here. And you could just see, what do you do? What do you do with the guy? Spud is so much better than the way he's been used in WWE. It's not the time. It's not the time right now. If you look at all of these wrestlers that were released, you could say one thing in common. I know for Hit Row, I know there was a lot of buzz about them going to the main roster. And unfortunately, a lot of the buzz were people that were throwing shit on it before they gave them a chance. I said early on, I said, look, in my opinion, it might be a little bit too soon, but hey, that's, that's their job. That's their dream. That's a challenge. Give them the chance to see if they can do it. And it never transpired. It never transpired. WWE just realized we got a two-hour program. We got the Usos. We got Roman Reigns. We got Drew McIntyre. We got Shinsuke Nakamura. Nakamura! We got Corbin. We got a few others. Remember when I said, who is Hit Row going to feud with? Who is Hit Row going to feud with? They should have stood in NXT and feuded Moa Legato, or they could have been another faction that could have been formed and they could have feuded there. My concern was not Hit Row doing their end of the bargain. By the way, it's downpouring over here, so hopefully we have no issues with internet. My concern was not their talent. My concern was, who are they going to go against? You knew they were not going up against the Usos. You know they were not going up against New Day. You know they weren't going to go up. Against, who are they going to feud with? There was pretty much nobody. So, again, this is not about killing Triple H's legacy, which is just ridiculous. This is about now, 2021, 2022. The road to WrestleMania is about to start. And a lot of these wrestlers, 
There's nothing. So why do we keep them under contract for another six, eight, nine months where we could cut our losses, 60-day, 30-day, 90-day, no compete, whatever it is, and that's it. We move on. Remember what I said a while back? Five years from now, when Jeff Hardy is retired, hopefully not, but if he is, five years from now, when some wrestlers that are on WWE are no longer going to be pretty much working full-time, opportunities are going to open up. No reason why some people can't be brought back. But for this particular moment, anybody, remember this, because I said this five months ago. I said it six weeks ago. And I say it again now. Anybody that is on Raw and SmackDown and even a little bit with NXT, if they're not getting airtime, if they're not getting a reaction, if they're not even getting a, rea a reaction on main event or any type of storyline at all, they're on the block. They're on the block. Anybody that could generate revenue, attention, ratings, merchandise, ticket sales, those are the ones that are pretty secure right now. Even stars that should have been much bigger, if they're not, in a big storyline right now, they're on the block. Get used to it. Get used to it. The days, again, you know, there's been releases every year. And back in the day, there were some years, but they had a lot of releases. I know we don't talk politics here, and I know we don't talk economics all that much on here, but you have to keep that in the back of your mind. Because as long as the economy is as screwed up as it is right now, and as long as we are still having a problem with COVID, you're going to see WWE working on a skeleton roster. That's it. There's nothing controversial about it. They're not, you know, look, if they get the perfect buyer that all makes them an offer they can't refuse, I'm sure WWE would consider selling. I'm sure that's always on the table. Wouldn't that be with any company? If you get an offer that's insanely good, you take it. You don't just say, no, no, it's a family business. No, 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 no. I mean, no. So there's nothing controversial about it. This is the corporate world. There's a lot of people out there that refuse to understand it, refuse to try to educate themselves about it, and some that intentionally ignore it. So they have clickbait, emotional videos. Oh my God, I can't wait to go online just to say, fuck you, Vince. Oh my God, I can't wait to log online. Da, 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 da. Look, everybody, I'm podcasting. Fuck you, Bruce. Fuck you, John. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. It's a joke, man. Isaiah Swerve Scott, Ashante Adonis, top dollar. All three of them are gone. Very surprised, to be honest with you, because... Isaiah Swerve Scott, I mean, these three guys were not getting paid a crazy amount of money. They're not getting paid a crazy amount of money. I don't know exactly what their income is, but, you know, I've seen a couple of spreadsheets that have, you know, some tax information on it. But the point is what I said a few moments ago, who do you put them up against? I don't understand why they couldn't consider bringing them back to NXT because there's a couple of people in NXT right now that you know. You know that they are on, on extremely thin ice. Some of it is unfair. Some of it is justified. I don't understand why some of these talents are not just sent back to NXT. I know, let me, let me get a little technical here. It's not as easy. When you just signed a contract that puts you on the main roster. Yes, there is a contract with NXT that is different from the main roster. So you go from NXT to the main roster, you sign a new deal, and now they want to put you back on NXT. No, 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 no. You, you signed a contract. It's reciprocal. It's reciprocal. You think WWE could say, I don't want to do it with these. I could do it at the bottom. You think... Yo, WWE signs Hit Row. Hey, 
and put you on the main roster. Sign the dotted line. Welcome to SmackDown. And then, you know, after two months, and have Triple H. It never happened. Uh, it never happened. Uh, Vince is like, what SmackDown contract? What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. You're on NXT. You got to take on a shot. You think that's the way it goes? That's not the way business goes. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yuck. Tonight's show is sponsored by Zevia Ginger Ale. Oh, that sucks. There's like foam all like dripping on my legs right now. I still have remnants of paper in my mouth. Yuck. I feel bad for those guys because they didn't even get the opportunity to show that they can actually click with the WWE roster. And they were they were they could have been great as far as the gimmick goes. I don't get it. I just don't get it. That leaves John Morrison. John Morrison, I almost put in the same category as Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy obviously has been around longer, has a little bit bigger of a stellar career than John Morrison has. But my God, the guy, I just keep thinking about him and Ricochet. And yes, it was Thunderdome still, but John Morrison is just, he is like an MVP in the sense that you could plug him in against anybody. Win or lose, the guy is phenomenal. I don't know with Taya Valkyrie being let go. I don't know if there was a stronger desire that he maybe wanted to leave. But I'm going to miss Morrison out of everybody that was released because I am a big Morrison fan. Big enough that I don't have a, one of his shirts, you know. Not that nothing, I never liked any of his shirts. I'm not going to lie. But um, they'll do just fine, everybody. Some of these wrestlers, I'm a little concerned about. That pause was because I burped. By the way. I'm being honest. Uh, I'm a little concerned about because if you look at the releases going back to 2020, Mish and I just had this conversation about a month ago. There's a lot of people who are released that you have heard next to nothing about. Yes, some people think their shit don't stink and they think that they're, they, they deserve much more than what they're being offered. But the fact of the matter is, some of these wrestlers that have been released in 2020 and 2021, you're going to see almost nothing from. There'll always be an indie promotion that might bring somebody in here and there and maybe more in their local hometown or state. But some of these wrestlers, I'm telling you, I heard somebody told me today that Nia Jax is going back to modeling. You know, I mean, some wrestlers... I don't know what they're going to do with their wrestling career going forward. But again, no, they did not release Jeff Hardy, Jeff. Unless maybe maybe there's some people that are released that I'm not aware of since we started the show. Chat room. Anybody else get let go since I started going live today? But um, keep in the back of your mind that this is not greed and this is not finance stop with the budget cut stuff yes it's it sounds terrible record profits yet there's budget cuts anybody that does that does not understand business does not understand what that means they immediately think budget cuts and they think financial problems well, how could you have budget cuts if you have record profits? As soon as you hear somebody say something stupid like that, they have no idea about business. And do we have to do the educational lesson on every show? You yourselves at home, you have a budget. You know how much money that comes into your household every month. You know that you could spend a certain amount of money on food, a certain amount of money going out, a certain amount of money on clothes, a certain amount of money on bills, a certain amount of money on, you know, OnlyFans, certain amount of money on different things. But 
if you decide, hey, you know, uh, we got to build a little nest egg for our future. We got to save for little Timmy, a little Lisa, 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 that we got to put some money aside. So you know what? Instead of spending $600 going out, maybe we only spend 400 going out. So those are your releases. Not a planned topic of discussion tonight, but obviously we had to get into it. So I'm just putting in little timestamps. I got my big marker today. Yesterday when I did timestamps, I forgot to close the marker. Today it was, it was dry, more shriveled up than like a 90-year-old woman's skin. <sighs> so I'm just checking out the chat room. What's up, everybody? Shout out to everybody who was live with me tonight. Um, hey, I want to share something with you. First of all, actually, you know, before we even get into that, uh, let's two little news tidbits very quickly. Aaliyah was pulled from the SmackDown Survivor Series women's team. Well, today on social media, you know, it blows me away. Because for two weeks, since they made the announcement, for two weeks, all I heard people say online is, why ain't you giving a push to Tony Storm? Tony Storm deserves to be in the Survivor Series team. Mitch Mayhem, welcome to the family. Tony Storm, Tony Storm. Everybody online, Tony Storm. And guess what happens today? She gets added in place of Aaliyah. And what do I hear today? Because it's... It's uncool to say, oh, cool, WWE, you got it right. Oh, thank you, WWE. That's uncool. Instead, oh, she's not worthy to be announced on TV. What do you don't think they're going to announce it tomorrow when they do the preview? The lead into Survivors are not going to mention it? People, it's so uncool to just say, oh, we got what we wanted for a change. So Tony Storm will replace Aliyah in Survivor Series. Good move, WWE, good move. AEW's rating, 984,000. We talked about it yesterday, and um, I think my prediction yesterday was like 940 and 950. We did 984, increase of about 5% from last week. Not bad, not bad at all. Um, I'm very, very happy that the rating went up at period. Because there was a little bit of concern, you know, with Hangman Page, his first Dynamite as AEW Heavyweight Champion, you know, if those ratings go down, that just doesn't look good at all. So I am really happy that the ratings went up a little bit. But I want to share something with all of you. Something that I have a feeling a lot of you out there already know this. But believe me when I tell you, a boatload of you out there do not know this. Now, for entertainment purposes only, no contest, for those in the chat room right now, you are welcome to play along. And I'm curious to see what your answer is. I have realized, and I have thought about this for a while, but it was only today that I decided to actually check it out to see if my perception was correct, and it was. There is a, I don't want to say a banned word in AEW, but there is a word in AEW that they absolutely hate to say, that they cringe whenever forced to say it. They never say it unless there is an, an out-of-the-ordinary reason why to say it. So for the chat room out there, do you have any idea what wrestling term, what one word that AEW absolutely hates to use? Now, right now in the chat room, we have words like entertainment, WrestleMania, Mark, those aren't bad words. Those aren't bad words. I honestly think those words probably shouldn't be used in AEW. Even though Brian Danielson, the way he said it yesterday about Mania, was fine. He, it was fine. I, I, no problem with that whatsoever. 
When people are like, could you stop name dropping WWE? No, that actually made sense yesterday. It made sense in the storyline. You know, the WWE Championship is a big, recognizable title. So in storyline with Hangman Page, look, the day after I won the championship, I was wrestling. You're not. Excellent point. Okay, we got strap. That's not bad. Undisputed. Medical facility is two words, Darren. Superstar. Okay, good words. Good words. Not, not, yes, I agree, Mike. New York, WWE botched hit row big time. Totally fucked him up. And look, I know Top Dollar had a little bit of controversy online. The Jinder Mahal rap and some social media and some journalist podcasters going back and forth. I like Top Dollar. I like the guy. The guy, AJ Francis, I fucking like the guy. I hope that guy turns around and kills it somewhere else. Seriously. Put him with the acclaimed. I'm checking. Okay. Lee says sports. All right. Well, I'm not going to say if anybody got it right or not, but I'm going to show you their Twitter account right now for reference. And I think a lot of you out there are going to be like, no shit. It is a word that you probably don't realize that AEW despises, despises cringes, hates using. And it's not a goofy word. When I post the word, you're going to be like, motherfucker. And you know why most of us never notices it? Because everybody else says the word. Get ready for this. I think this is worthy that a lot of you out there are going to write about this on other websites. And trust me, I did a Twitter search I didn't find one Twitter account that ever posted this. If I have to, I'll do a Twitter search live. I'll put the screen and on the screen, you see for yourself. Lee says laid. No, I think AEW stars get laid. All right. What I'm going to do right now, I know it looks a little bit unprofessional, but I cannot see the chat room for a brief moment. I am currently, here we go. We're on Twitter right now. I like that I could do this. We're on Twitter right now. For my audio-only friends out there, you do not have to go check out the video because I will give you a little bit of play-by-play. -play. Right now, I am in Twitter, and I am in the section that says advanced search. So we are going to type in one word, one word on this advanced search, and as you could see, it, it, we're going to put, now that's obviously my Twitter account, we're going to put at AEW. That is on the screen right now. So any word that I type in above here, it if I use AEW as the search term, they're gonna it Twitter is gonna look at AEW's social media account and they're gonna find all the posts that match up to this word. Are you ready? Trust me when I tell you, this is worth it because again, no one else out there has written about it. And I started picking up on it a couple of months ago. We've kind of talked about it indirectly in the past. But I had no idea that AEW hates the word so much they never write it. And here is the word. Heavyweight. I am going to click search under AEW's account under heavyweight. Okay. Now I'm going to click latest so we can see all the tweets that AEW included the word heavyweight. October 26th, this was someone else's article. How AEW became a wrestling heavyweight in just two years. That is the promotion. That is not an individual wrestler. Let's go down the list. IWGP US heavyweight. That's a commercial. Here we go. IWGP US heavyweight. You see my mouse? Look. IWGP US Heavyweight. We're ready in May. Look, we're ready in May. Do you see them referencing their world champion as world heavyweight champion? I don't think so. The only time they use the word heavyweight is when they reference IWGP's title. Look, look, we're, 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 we're wow, they were obsessed with Yuji Nagata. Look, we're going down the list. Look, it's all IWGP. 
They do not use heavyweight champion. See, look, this was another article. See, this is August of 2019. So the only time that they have ever even referenced the word heavyweight for their championships is over two years ago. Now I go back to the chat room. I'm curious to see what the reaction is. Yep. Did you ever notice that? I mean, we've talked about it. Remember Cody in the parking lot? How many times have I brought that before? We're a light heavyweight division uh, promotion. That is a banned word in AEW. You do not reference the world champion as a heavyweight champion. If you look on their Twitter, going back over two years, they refuse to use heavyweight unless it's another promotion's belt. Bet you didn't notice that. Bet you didn't notice that. Okay, there is an article, Taya Valkyrie lashes out over John Morrison's release. Well, that tells me that John Morrison wasn't looking to be let go. Look, I think Scarlett said it best tonight. Guys, gals, the water is warm. You ever like go to the beach where you go over a friend's house with the pool and you look at the water, you're like, Bruh. and somebody says, no, 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 the water's warm. Come in, the water's warm. That's what Scarlett's message is to everybody today. And it is, it is. Like I said before, I feel bad even before Taya Valkyrie vented on this, I feel bad for John Morrison the most because he entertained the fuck out of me with his return. And he deserved a hell of a lot more. I don't like using the term, you deserve it. You deserve it. But that guy gave 150%, no matter who he was fighting. Deserve better. Deserve better. RMJ23, you missed all the contests. You missed everything. You missed everything, my friend. No, we had a bunch of releases again today. Again, as we move on, I'll repeat something I said a few moments ago. As long as we're in this economy, and as long as we're still in COVID, WWE is going to work on a skeleton crew. And if you are not bringing anything to the table, if you're not generating any good interest, good interest, not talk good about me, talk bad about me, just talk about me. If you do not get a lot of fan interest, if you don't sell merch, if you don't get a lot of buzz, if you don't get a crowd reaction, if you are just there, there's no more sitting and catering. There's no more for that. Any wrestler that is on the roster right now that is not doing much, those wrestlers, male or female, are on thin ice. So if two weeks, three weeks from now, oh God, it's Christmas time. If anybody else gets released, you look at those names, stop with the fucking, oh, COVID, no, va no vaccine, no employment, no, no shot, no shot. You think Vince says to him, did you get your shot? Oh, I didn't get my shot yet, Vince. No shot, no shot. You're fired. Stop that, stop that. It's the economy, stupid. So, I got news for you, Mike. Reggie actually does get a lot of reaction online, more than you think. It's a little surprising. And Reggie is making almost no money. I mean, the guys in Top Dollar were not making crazy money, but Reggie was ma is making even less. Reggie, I don't like the wrestler because of all the horrible storylines that they put him with the women, but... You know, I'm not saying that the guy's a bad guy. You know, you, you could kind of see who fits WWE, you know, template better than others. Ray, it's not a crippled company. What are you talking about? They made $800 billion the last four months. Ever since people were saying WWE is dying, they made $800 billion. If you and I made $800, we'd be ecstatic. Just multiply that by $1 billion. $800 billion. 
billion with a B in this economy. Chris is saying my Mr. McMahon impression is fine. I got a headache tonight. So every time I do it, there's like a certain part of my temple that's like, could you stop that, please? You know, I didn't get good sleep yesterday. But anyway, um, what else could we talk about? Oh, woo! Let's talk about Ric Flair and Becky Lynch. Then we'll do the contests. Then we'll call it a night. Believe it, we've already gone an hour. Time flies when you're having fun. Don't forget, I will be here Saturday night. Survivor Series predictions. We'll talk about Rampage. It's pre-recorded. I already saw the detailed spoilers. I'm not going to say a word about it tonight. We'll talk about SmackDown. Any statements that come out between now and then? Any other news that breaks? Now, don't forget next week. Next week. Oh, I got a treat for all of you. I got, Okay. Lee is telling me to look up Taya Valkyrie's Twitter post. It's worth a read. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do this. Taya Valkyrie. Let me pull it up. Who the hell is Taya Gungrogla? I put in the wrong Taya. Oh, no, you do not. I guess she's a singer. Okay, here we go. Let's see what she wrote. Um, I'm looking... I'm looking, I see nothing. I see nothing. Yeah, no, I see nothing. Sorry. You got to give me a link or something. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I think this is the tweet. Lee, is this the tweet where she says, and I quote, stop supporting a company that has zero respect for their talent. You love pro wrestling. Spend your money on the hundreds of other alternatives. This is wrong. Ethically, as employers, they don't care about us, talent or fans. My, If that's the tweet, my honest reaction to it, seriously, I'm saying this to Taya Valkyrie. I don't know if she ever tunes in, and I say this with the utmost respect. Seriously. This is Anthony de Blasi talking right now, not Don Tony. Hey, what are you, stupid? No. Honestly, where have these wrestlers been? WWE's been publicly traded billion-dollar company for how many years now? And they're only figuring it out? Come on, man. Come on. Seriously? Come on. You watch. Every time a wrestler from AEW, Impact Wrestling, Japan, Mexico, Indie Circuit, Jersey, New York, California, GCW, GFW, FWW, whatever it is, every time WWE signs a wrestler from this point forward, I want Taya Valkyrie and every wrestler and every fan out there to flood that person's page and instead of saying congratulations, best of luck, kill it, nail it, go, oh, we, we so excited for you. Instead of that, you got to say, what are you, fucking stupid? Did you learn? Did you learn? Every wrestler knows this coming in. Taya Valkyrie, with all due respect, she had to have known this when she signed the dotted line. You know what happens? Do you know why these wrestlers still sign? Oh, this is worth the timestamp. I got to put it. I got to put a timestamp for this because this is something I think. You know what happens with these wrestlers? And I'm not going to mention three or four wrestlers that I've talked to in the last six months that have been released. But they didn't bitch. They were disappointed. They were angry. Fire lit under their ass. But the one thing that I keep getting said to me without, you know, having a Zoom with everybody together is this. Every wrestler that signs with WWE knows the risk that is involved when you join that company. You know it's about bottom line more than anything else. But the reason why these wrestlers still sign and still say in interviews that if, you, if your goal was not to go to WWE, you're a lion. 
The reason why they still sign is because they think they are the exception to the rule. Period. A lot of these wrestlers are so confident in their work that, yeah, WWE does that. But I'm not one of those people. Look at my resume. Look at what I do. Look at where I've been. Look what I can offer. Look how, you know, uh, diverse my resume is. I'm not one of those people that have to throw shit on the wall to stick. I'm exception to the rule. That's what they all do. And those four wrestlers that I talked to that have been released over the last six months, in one way or another, said pretty much the same thing. That they thought that they had something about them that they can adapt, adjust, that they were very diverse. And every single wrestler knows that. Let's start seeing big names not sign and work in a grocery store or get bullshit money work in the indies and then do an interview and say WWE offered me six digits and I said no because I'm sick and tired of how they treat their wrestlers. Let's see people doing that. This is the Zelina Vega shit all over again. Zelina Vega, she got let go. The the union stuff. Everybody in wrestling, we're behind you. We love you. We support you. We're with you. We're this. And then she meets the ambulance chaser, Gar Gabrielle Cartieres. And the ambulance chaser makes Zelina Vega feel like, oh, no, no, she's going to start a movement. In 10 years from now, we're going to look on Wiki. And Zelina Vega was the one that started the creation of a wrestler's union and this, this and that. And they're going to build a monument. With Zelina Vega. And what happened? Zelina Vega said, You with me? Guys. Hello. Where'd you go? Anybody? So easy to type emotional tweets. You'll get 5,000 likes. You tell them until the next person signs. Fuck out of here. Seriously, that's my honest feeling on it. Taya Valkyrie is right. Say that to every person who signs with the WWE going forward. Let's see them tell Gable. He's already signed. What are you fucking stupid? How could you stay with that company? How could you sign with them? When they sign the next sports athlete that's not a wrestler. I want to see all of these people including all of you that feel that same way, for all the people that keep saying, fuck things, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck. I want you all to flood those wrestlers, that next person that signs a WWE deal, and cancel them out. What are you fucking stupid? What are you, dense? Did you learn anything? You deserve it. If you get pushed like shit, you deserve it. They won't do that. They're going to do this. That's the truth. That's the truth. You will see in a couple of months, WWE will sign a few more people to independent deals. Oos. It's a co You'll see some people that'll get signed and everybody will be like, oh, that's fucking awesome. Oh, that's amazing. That's so sweet. Oh, you should be in the bloodline. Oh, that's awesome. And then they get released. How can WWE treat them like shit? Why do people keep signing it? They know exactly what they're signing. They know exactly what they're signing. It's just like a toxic relationship. I brought this up before. I dated a girl about 25 years ago. And she was... Really, really nice to talk to. Great personality, attractive, you know, just great sense of humor. And the people that she dated before me were mostly bikers. And they all seemed to have one thing in common. They all seemed to beat the shit out of her. And I swear to God, I remember sitting on her stoop in Ozone Park. And we were having a nice conversation. And she started crying. And I said, what's wrong? She says, why are you? 
you so nice to me? And I said, what do you mean? I'm just, it's me, you know? And all my friends said to me, Anthony, I was a DT yet. Anthony, you're making a mistake. You know, that you're, you don't fit, you know, the type of guy that she likes. She likes to be controlled and this, this, and that. And I'm like, no, no. You know, I'm different than those guys. I treat her like respect. That's how you want to be treated. Not the Dougie Fresh treat her like a prostitute. Just treat her very well. Treat him very No, I treated her nice. We broke up about six weeks later. My friends were right. If you have a girl that sees a guy and everybody tells that girl, stay away from him. He's trouble. He's going to cheat on you. He's going to do this to you. No, no, no. I'm different. I got it all. He ain't no way he going to get rid of me. Uh, 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 uh. And then he does the same thing. And then she cries hysterically, or he cries hysterically, whatever floats your boat. And then they act like, why? This is exactly what's going on with WWE. Remember this timestamp. Remember this conversation when the next crop of people sign with them. And you watch everybody that seemed to have a set of balls online or guts. You see how silent they get to those people that sign with WWE in the future. Ho, ho, ho. Very easy to write the emotional tweets, get 500 likes. I'm not talking about, look, Taya Valkyrie has every right to be pissed off. John Morrison has worked his ass off in that company and pretty much got stepped on. Seriously. So Taya Valkyrie has the direct connection. She's exempt. But for everybody else out there that's going to do the blogs and the podcast and the articles and the tweets and write all this F you stuff and yeah, you watch when the next person signs, they're going to disappear. I was at the supermarket. Oh, I had to take my fictitious dog to the vet. I was on a date. I ate too many dates and I had the shits. You know, you're going to see all the excuses why they didn't rip the new signees to a new asshole. If you disagree with me, post it in the comment section. All right. Um, let's talk about Ric Flair and Becky Lynch. I know. We were going to do it before. We're only at an hour and eight minutes, so we still got a few. We still got 20 minutes left. Okay. I'm going to go a different direction with this because everybody is going in the same direction. All right. We talked about it on Monday. You know, Ric Flair making the shots to Becky Lynch. You know, Becky Lynch did an interview with Ariel Hawani. By the way, I already watched it in its entirety. Ariel Hawani did an interview with Paul Heyman that went about 45 minutes. I will talk about it maybe on Saturday. If not, maybe Monday with Mish. Let's see how much we have to talk about Saturday. But I will say this. Paul Heyman does bring up AEW, gives a very professional answer, positive answer, which I think a lot of people will like. The interview is excellent. But Ariel Hawani said one sentence in this whole 45 minutes, which shows to the entire world out there why Ariel Hawani gets these interviews and we don't, and you don't. Because, and I'm not trying to disrespect the guy, but Ariel Hawani, you know, like, you have a grandma, you ever have a grandma that, for some reason can't kiss you like a normal person it's got to be like <laughs> the fuck just give me a kiss i don't need to get bad to the mask <laughs> that's what ariel hawani did that to paul Heyman. you know what the one sentence he was he said paul wrestling has not been this interesting in 20 years Wrestling has not been this interesting in 20 years. 
That's all I'm going to say. Just think about 2002, 2004, 2005, 2010, 2012. 20 years wrestling hasn't been this interesting. There's one fucking storyline on SmackDown. What's the storyline on Raw that everybody's talking about? It hasn't been this interesting. Don't tell me AEW makes it. AEW is good. The mo most interesting wrestling has been in 20 years. Think of all those storylines. Now, that is <coughs> bend over, Paul. Please don't have any pimples on your ass while I kiss it. Shout out to Botch Club. Hey, he sent the five spot. He says, follow Wrestle Daily on Instagram and TikTok. And by the way, my apologies to everyone for the other day with this Sean Views ent, whatever. I mixed him up with someone else. I thought it was a different Sean that I have talked to in the past that supports my work. I had no idea that he started trolling in the chat room the other day. Now, I want to say this clearly to Sean, who's probably going to watch this. I did not block you. I did not remove you. Lee and Austin or anyone else that is a moderator in the chat, I trust them. So if they removed you, there is a specific reason behind it. If you feel that it was incorrect, email me, dontony at dontony.com. And that goes for pretty much anybody out there. Email me. But to go around and tell people that Don Tony blocked me, that's technically not true. Trust me, if I block someone, I will say it. I will say it. Right, AJ? And that's not Francis or Styles or Lee or uh, Mendez. None of those. He knows what I'm talking about. Well, if Sean was putting himself over, oh, I don't know. I mean, mute people, mute them. I mean, look, you know, don't use my wall for self-promotion. You want to give like a little pl plug to yourself, you know, all right, you know, whatever. But if you keep posting it over and over and over, 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 yeah, of course you're going to be gone. You know, this, this chat room is for everybody to discuss the topics at hand and to laugh and have a good time. And if people get flooded with trying to plug their own stuff, it's going to get deleted. It's just the facts. All right. Ric Flair and Becky Lynch. We talked about it a couple of days ago. Ric Flair throwing a couple of jabs at Becky Lynch. Well, Becky Lynch did an interview with Ariel Awani. And like I said, I'm going to take a different direction in this. And I honestly think a lot of you out there are going to agree with me on my direction. Now, in response to Ric Flair talking about, you know, there's not enough choreography or, you know, basically calling Becky Lynch kind of a fraud or, you know, manufactured, you know, by WWE. Anyway, the interview with Ariel Hawani and uh, I think Post Wrestling also did this transcript, so you give them credit. This is Becky Lynch's response. And the reason why it's on the left side of the screen for the video is because something else is going to be shown in a moment. Becky Lynch says about Ric Flair's tweet from the other day. Okay, here's the tweet that Ric Flair said the other day. Remember, we talked about it on Monday. He says, I don't think so, sister. The man, big time Bex, or whatever you call yourself, there's not enough choreography in the business to save you. Remember that? Becky Lynch's response was, and I quote, look, I saw that tweet. The one that you're referring to, the one I'm kind of referring to, I looked at it, I wrote a response that would have been quite biting, and I deleted it. And I let it go because I think it's really sad because this is a legend at one point. This legend, a 16-time world champion, Ric Flair, is now jealous of me. It's cool for me. And now trying to use me to get clout, to promote whatever he has going on next because he's dug himself in a hole with other things. So I kind of was just like, ah, let him out, let him out of it because it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad. That is Becky Lynch's reply. 
Junior Jackson, I could care less people wishing death on Vince McMahon. Those are people just looking for attention, looking to get the likes, making them feel that they're, you know, wanted, acknowledged. They want to feel good. They want to feel popular. You know, it's like the nerd in grammar school who does stupid shit so everybody could laugh at him. Oh, look, I'm popular. Everybody's laughing at me. I'm funny. No, you're a goof. and Everybody is laughing at you because you're pathetic. That's how I look at those people online. Ric Flair's response to Becky Lynch. And I'll then tell you my reaction to this. It's not what you think. Ric Flair says, and I quote, so disappointed. I did this out of respect for you. And what he means by that is he sold the trademark of the man to WWE so Becky Lynch can have it. Ric Flair's tweet again, so disappointed. I did this out of respect for you, Becky Lynch. It made you millions and it made me nothing. After 40, 40 years of being the man, the company doesn't own it and neither do you. I'll always be the man. Ask your husband. Remember, about a year ago, it was reported that Ric Flair sold the trademark or the rights to the man to WWE, whatever it is. My reaction to all of this, drum roll please, how convenient that all this starts right before Survivor Series. That is my reaction to all of this. How convenient. Remember about a month ago, I said that WWE is going to try to push those Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels vibes to Charlotte and Becky Lynch. I think they're doing a pretty damn good job of it right now. Ric Flair wants to be in wrestling till the day he dies. Ric Flair knows about character and storyline and suspension of disbelief and doing things and this, this, and that. A little too convenient that this is all happening right before a match between Becky and Charlotte. When Ric Flair says that his legacy is being erased by WWE, the only thing that I have seen removed by WWE is the goddamn intro to their TV programming. When it goes, dun, 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 woo, dun, 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 that's the only thing that has been removed. Triggered. Well, Ric, you ever think that Dark Side of the Ring kind of like did it to you? His woo would probably still be on that intro if Dark Side of the Ring didn't air. For all of you out there that can't wait for those next Dark Side of the Rings, oh, man, one day it's going to cause somebody to do something really, really terrible to themselves. Dark Side of the Ring, garbage. Some are finally figuring out. That is garbage. That is garbage. They have some decent shows, but sorry, you don't get extra credit because you do a beautiful show about Canyon, but you're an absolute dick to play gotcha stuff in other topics. Fuck you. Seriously. Fuck them. Yeah, his Car Shield commercial still there because Car Shield has a deal with USA Network and Fox. Not with WWE. So that's my honest take on Ric Flair and Shaw and uh Charlotte and Becky Lynch. This is all about Survivor Series. Let's see if all this feuding continues a month from now. Let's see. If it quietly disappears, you know, I'm sorry, you know, an, an upcoming interview, oh, I'm just not going to talk about him anymore. He's not worth my time. Yeah, that's because Survivor Series is now over with. I don't know what you all think about it. Rick Flair also made a claim that WWE has two of his title belts. You know, I'll look into it. You know, he's going to do uh, his podcast. A little convenient. He launches his podcast. Now suddenly, you know, I want my belts back. It's all about promotion, man. I think everybody's figured it out. It's all, it's all about timing. It's all about timing. I mean, you figure it out. No, so fly. I don't think it's all a work. I think there's legit tension. But everybody know, knows what's going on. You got Survivor Series coming up. 
And this is to intensify that friction between Charlotte and Becky Lynch. You know, sooner or later, Charlotte is probably going to have some retaliatory comment to Becky Lynch about her dad. And this is all too, co too convenient that it happens right before Survivor Series. So, let's do the contest. We'll start wrapping it up. By the way, I, I said earlier, I got a treat for all of you. Check this out. Next week is Thanksgiving. I will be away either Wednesday night, and if I do go away Wednesday, obviously there'll be no Wednesday night dynamite next week. I, I, as of right now, I'm not leaving until early, early, early Thursday morning. So if I leave Thursday morning, that means there's still going to be a show on Wednesday. But definitely next week, there's going to be no Q&A next Thursday. There's going to be no live stream on Saturday. And the week after will be the launch of the sit down. I have decided. So two weeks from this weekend, we'll finally launch the sit down and that will remain for good. So for all of you out there that love the pilot, two weeks from this weekend will be the official debut of the sit down and it will remain. It'll be strictly a call in show. And if you have not checked out the pilot yet, go check it out. It was freaking awesome. I don't think it could have gotten any better. Now, I was thinking about doing it on Sunday, but we got Survivor Series. So this weekend, I'll be here Saturday. I'll be here Sunday. I'll be here Monday. And I'll be on Patreon too. So we still have shows left. But here's the treat. Even though there's not going to be any live shows Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday next week, we are going to record an episode. If you would like to be part of the first ever rapid fire on YouTube video, in the community section right now on YouTube, there is a thread up where you can leave your rapid fire questions for this special episode. Mish will be on with me. So any rapid fire you have for yours truly or Mish, get it in by Sunday night at midnight because Monday afternoon, Monday afternoon, Mish and I are going to record the episode in advance and it will be released to all of you on Thursday. So it'll be set up on a timer. So Thursday comes, boop, it'll be released. Now, I will stress this because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. If you don't know what rapid fire is, Google it. Because if it's an answer that takes more than 10 seconds for us to answer, it's not rapid fire. So you could ask 20 questions as long as it's in rapid fire format. Um. We did one on Patreon about two or three years ago. We answered, I think, 250 questions in a matter of like two hours. So you have until Sunday night at midnight to post your questions because Monday afternoon we are going to do the rapid fire. Of course, our channel members and, and members of the family, their questions will be answered first. It's only fair. But yeah, rapid fire, yeah. You know, like just simple things. Anything you ever wanted to know about us personally, professionally, something like favorite wrestler, favorite pay-per-view, favorite food, whatever it is. You don't know what rapid fire is, Google it. Because I already saw two people that posted questions. I'm like, yeah, sorry, that's not rapid fire. So, you know, we want to just have a fun episode, not think about it, fly through all the questions and have some fun. So that'll be on Monday afternoon. Monday night, we'll still be here for Breakfast Soup Raw, so have no fears. Also, before we do the contest, check this out. This came out today. That is actually a screenshot from the video game. I, as much as some of you may dislike Goldberg, that's pretty promising to see the graphics. Now, yes, yes, fucking half the roster is not going to even be in the game anymore. I think you will still have some wrestlers in the game that were on the roster who are now released. I know there's going to be some sad irony about it, but hey, you'll be the GM because you have GM mode. So if you're kind of bitter still about Keith Lee, you know, you could have Keith Lee become the heavyweight champion. Hopefully they don't implant any storylines in the game where like uh, Keith Lee is about to fight whoever the 2K22 champion is. And then the doctor comes in. He's like, uh, Keith, I got some. I got, I have Wade Barrett come in. I got some bad news, Keith. 
You're not cleared. You're not cleared. They need a video game to come out like that with some really fucked up, real, real storylines. Not that. I mean, we're not joking about that. I love Keith Lee. But um, I think some people will still be in the video game that are released. But I tell you, you know, this is very promising. You know, more will come out in January, and January will be here a lot quicker than you think. But um, I'm, a, I'm a little excited for it. It's better than that Battleground shit. Damn, I thought that Battleground was going to be great. Man, I remember when I said on this show, when we got the early teaser of it, I'm like, wow, this might be the first wrestling game I get in a long, long time. And before I got it, I said, ah, let me see what other people think about it. And they're like, it's goddamn awful. It's awful. Thank God I didn't waste my money. Yeah, GM modes are fun. GM modes are fun. You know, especially when you can just sit back and let, you know, your players or wrestlers do all the work. So, but um, I, I tell you this much. For any of you that are younger, maybe like in your 20s, you have no idea what you missed 20 years ago. I'm telling you, if you go on Wayback Machine, and click in my website, wrestling-news.com. I know a lot of you know it is dontony.com, but it's actually wrestling-news.com. One of the things that we were obsessed with 20 years ago was like SmackDown, Here Comes the Pain, or whatever it was, SmackDown versus whatever the game was. And the Creator Wrestler Gallery was goddamn insane. If you go on the Wayback Machine and check out my website from 18 to 20 years ago, you will see somewhere on the main page, there was always a Create a Wrestler Gallery. And believe it or not, if you click the link, you could still see it. It'll blow your mind how many awesome-looking Create a Wrestlers. And look, the graphics obviously were nothing compared to today. But that was one of the most enjoyable parts of those games back then people were more into creating wrestlers than actually the gameplay i'm telling you wrestlemania 2000 was fun those games back in the day man you, you seriously i'm not trying to play like a nostalgia thing right now but you have no idea what you missed incredible and uh go check it out i think you'll get a kick out of it no mercy was freaking awesome you know what was an awesome game too? WC what was it? WCW versus the world? Was that it? Which which WCW video game had Raven on the front? That game was freaking great, man. That game was awesome. What was the game? Was it WCW Revenge? Is that the one with Raven on the on the, the box art? That game was freaking awesome. WCW NWO Revenge, that was it. Okay. Yeah, World Tour. All right, we got to... Uh, look, they're all good games. Crush Hour was all right. WWF Crush Hour was pretty good. So check them out if you've never seen them. All right, let's do some prizes. Do some giveaways, and then we're going to call it for the night. All right. As you can see, you got Lily and Charlotte behind me. Yes, the belt is removable. If you didn't see, I think, Monday's show, I showed everyone. I Last week, I showed you Charlie, and I didn't realize the belt, you can remove it. So I had said, oh, it's sewed in. And my fiance like, what are you talking about? She pulled it off. So, yeah, there's a magnet. I don't want to remove it from there because they look pretty cute together. Somebody's going to win them both tonight. Somebody's going to win the Charlotte doll, the, excuse me, the Charlie doll and the Alexa Bliss Lily doll. <laughs> they didn't come up with a goofy laugh for Charlie. You know, I kind of re kind of disappointed at that. You know, they should have did something with Lily where you push like the ass and it chuckles. I mean, I know that sounds kind of perverted. It's not meant to be. Or the tummy. You push the tummy. Like, people used to call me, um, oh, what was that? Oh, they used to, when I was a lot heavier, they used to call me the Pillsbury Doughboy. And then, you know, some of my friends, to be a dick, they would, like, take their finger. Pretend this is my stomach because it's too low. they take my stomach and they would go, <laughs> so it's like, oh, no, no, no. That's not funny. It'd be like this, like you grab somebody's ass. <laughs> they should have done that. 
but no no electronic devices in there. So somebody's going to win Charlie and Lily tonight. You get the pair. Also tonight, someone is going to win the John Moxley book. Uh, yeah, I should pull up the graphic. It's kind of disrespectful if we don't. Hopefully, John Moxley is doing much better with his battles with rehab. You know, I hope he comes back. I think he's going to be back sooner than you think. I'm not kidding. I, I would not be surprised if Moxley comes back within the next couple of weeks. I'm dead serious. I think he will be back a lot sooner than people think. So tonight, let's pull this up. Tonight, someone is going to win the Moxley book. Uh, that's kind of small. There we go. Someone will win the Moxley book. I, you know, I got to thank the publishing company for sending me a box full of books. Honestly, did not expect to have so many giveaways. But, uh, yeah, so we still have a couple left. So we're going to give away one book tonight. Someone's going to win a book. Someone else is going to win the Lily and the Charlie doll. And then someone else, because I wanted to do a little something for retro. Um, let me show you the video because I recorded a little video last week. Someone is going to win this tonight. Hey, I wanted to come up with something special as a giveaway since the channel is doing so well. And now with our shows being signed to a new network, this is what we're going to give away. Somebody is going to win this very cool triple signed WWF magazine. It is autographed by Rikishi, Scotty Tuhati, and sadly the late great Grandmaster Sexay, Brian Christopher. And you also get these Grandmaster Sexay autographed goggles. It's got the PSA DNA. And this is a full, you know, uh, I used to own that Jericho-holic shirt. Yeah, it's it Taz, young, 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 Matt Hardy. Pretty cool. The full magazine. So you get the entire magazine. And on the back, the mustache. So, all right, everybody. This is just a gift from me to say thank you for all your support. And, uh... Good luck to everybody uh, who enters the giveaway. All right. So here's was simple rules. On last week's show, we posted a comment in the comment section. Everybody that wanted to be part of the contest to win the John Moxley book, all you had to do was put hashtag Mox, M-O-X. If you wanted to be part of the giveaway for the Charlie doll and the Lily doll, you put Hashtag Charlie, C H A R L Y. If you spelled it wrong, I'm sorry. And if you wanted to be part of the Too Cool giveaway, you would type in hashtag Too Cool, T O O C O O L, all one word. That's all you had to do. Now, obviously, only one prize per person. So if somebody is randomly picked twice, you know, you only get one prize, obviously. So what we are going to do is I am going to pull up last week's episode on the screen and um, so you could see it, and then we're going to pick the three winners. We'll pick the Moxley book first, we'll pick the Dolls second, and we'll pick the Too Cool last. Now, if you win and you decide you don't want your prize, you have two options. You could either put it back in the pool and we'll give it, a back, we'll give it away on a, the next episode, or... If you have someone else in mind that you want to give it to, by all means, you could do that as well. If you win it, you want to throw it up on eBay, go right ahead. It's yours. You do whatever you want with it. So this is last week's, con uh, last week's episode. Just to show you that this is current, I'm going to type right on the top, WWE releases Morrison. Obviously, I can't predict the future. So obviously, you know that this is current. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to go over here and we're going to select pick a winner. Now, this is just for a shout out. This is not for a prize. But here, I have to type in the hashtag in order for it to randomly pick a winner. If I pick someone right now, then this is not for a prize. This is just practice. Shout out goes to VJ. VJ. Would have won something, but obviously, VJ, we didn't put the hashtag. All right, so now we're going to go back here, 
And obviously, see Mike Awesome? Well, you're deceased. But I do like the Michael Jackson emoji. All right, now let's do it for real. Let's go to pick a winner. Comment must include hashtag mops. So now when I click that green button, it's going to search all the comments from last week. And it's going to randomly pick one. So congratulations go out to Sean Bedard. Sean Bedard, you won the John Moxley book. So congrats to you. Now we go back here and we're going to go and we're going to type in hashtag Charlie. Now, if Sean's name comes up again, you already got your prize. Unfortunately, you do not qualify for the next one. So congratulations goes to Brian Nova. With me bringing back retro shows, can I please bring up the going up Don, uh, Don Tony episodes? Yeah, they're coming back. Absolutely. You know, they're kind of revolutionary. I didn't realize how long ago some of those were. But thank you for the kind words, and congrats. You win the Charlie and Lily dolls. So very cool, very cool. <laughs> All right, we go back for the last one. We get a pick. So we're going to put hashtag too cool. And then we're going to click pick a winner. Congrats goes to George Ford. George Ford. I know some of you out there just kissing, being, well, I shouldn't say kissing ass. Nobody kisses ass here. You're being very kind for your words. Unfortunately, we've had people say, DT, you suck, and they won the prize anyway. So George Ford, congrats, my friend. You win the Too Cool package, the, the uh, autographed magazine and the autographed goggles. So those are your winners. See, I know the way I do it is a little primitive, but you would be shocked how many contests online that are fake. I've been online since the beginning of the internet, and I've come across a lot of people that have had wrestling shows that they used to give away PlayStations, Xbox, video games, money, belts. Now, there is a website that does belts. That is legit. I know I think Jason Solomon usually picks the winners. That website is legit. I'm not including them in this. But you'd be surprised how many websites, and they do it on Twitter now. They do it on Twitter. What they'll do is they'll say, okay, you got to follow me. You got to tweet a, a picture. You got to post a comment. You got to write this. You got to blow me. You got to do it. You got to do like 10 things. And then, oh, we'll randomly select somebody from Twitter. There is no program where you could select it live. So what do they do? They either have a burner Twitter account or they have a friend that has a burner Twitter account and they'll pick someone else. Or they pick one of their friends or somebody that they're involved with the shows with a fake account and they don't give the prize away. Sometimes they just pick a name. Some, not every contest is fake. I want to make that clear. Not every contest is fake. But there is a hell of a lot of people out there that just do this stuff just to get hits, just to get attention. And at the end of the day, they don't give away nothing. They don't give away nothing. So, but anyway, um, I'm going to jet out of here. We're at an hour and 40 minutes. Very manageable. And uh, look, in the comments section, let me know what you think about the releases. Which release are you most surprised about? For me, again, it's Morrison. Well, you know what? Uh, I I'll take that back. John Morrison is the one that pisses me off the most. But of all the, re the people released, I would say Isaiah Swerve Scott. I, I would say him because that guy. Now, look, let's also be honest. You remember what I said, that NXT North American Championship run that he had was garbage. It was garbage. It was garbage. They did nothing with the championship. If the guy was so awesome in WWE's eyes, you don't have to prove it to us. The guy was great. But if WWE was so behind that guy, why didn't they do anything with the belt? That should have been a warning sign right there. And you almost think now, Think about this. I'll leave you with this. We talked about it before that Top Dollar had nobody to feud with on SmackDown. Nobody. Nobody. Makes you wonder that with NXT going back to their roots, going back to pure developmental, that did they take 
some people off of NXT so they would not be involved in current storylines and they would be used for a little while and unless something magical happened, they were going to be released. Don't be surprised because this is how the sausage is made. You're going to read at least one or two websites that are going to say that WWE had planned to release some of these stars months ago because you ask yourself, why promote them to the main roster just to release them? You're going to see some places reporting that. I think that they removed some people from NXT. So when they started the 2.0, they wanted it to be focused on these stars and you have to bring them somewhere. So they brought them to the main roster, hoping that lightning would strike in a bottle in a matter of a month. It didn't happen. And they're like, all right, that's it. We're done. That's what it feels like. Totally unfair. But remember, the next person that signs with WWE, all of those people yelling and screaming right now, let's see if they flood the signees with all, what are you, stupid? Did you, how could you sign with them? After what they're doing to everybody else, you watch how everybody turns their back and looks the other way. So everyone, have a great Thursday night. Have a wonderful Friday. Enjoy Rampage. Look, again, I read the spoilers. Sounds like a good show. I think Rampage, no reason why their numbers don't rebound a little bit. They got to get back to 600,000. I mean, you know, I always said 550 to 750. It's going to fluctuate. No reason why they shouldn't get at least 600 or close to 600,000. I'd be happy with 580. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Enjoy SmackDown. It's going to be the final SmackDown before Survivor Series. I'll be up here Saturday giving you my Survivor Series predictions. Um, we are going to do a predictions contest on YouTube for the channel members and on Patreon. And then I'll be here Sunday night with your Survivor Series recap. And don't forget the rapid fire. Roger Rubio, thank you. I won't have coffee tonight because I need to get myself some good sleep tonight. And we're ending early, which is great. I get to have the show done before midnight, but I will definitely have a cup of coffee tomorrow. Much love, my friend. Thank you. And congrats again to the winners. We'll do another contest next week. I have a few things up my sleeve. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll set something up and be part of a rapid fire. I think it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. Go out there with your questions. I mean, ask some zany shit. So catch Mish off guard, especially. Let's throw that son of a bitch off guard and let him have some fun answering some crazy questions. So believe me, when we did Patreon the other day, someone asked about something religious. Like if you look at like Jesus Christ and Abel and something, like how would they be perceived in today? And I was like, can you imagine Jesus doing a TikTok video? Everybody calls him a fraud. You don't do miracles. You're full of shit. You're just looking for attention. And then he's on TikTok. He's like, oh, yeah, watch this. I'm going to turn this water into wine. And he goes like this, and it turns into wine. So you know how they do those videos? Even WWE stars will do it. Like, they'll be like, no makeup. Hair is totally, like, messed up, and this, this, and that. And they'll be, like, doing things, and they put their thing over their face. And when it comes back, it's like, they're like... That's the stupid, crazy shit that we get on Patreon sometimes. So we'll have fun. We'll have fun. Everyone, much love. And again, tonight's Q&A live stream will return in two weeks. But don't forget, next Thursday, I will have a special Rapid Fire episode that will be released so everyone could enjoy it. And uh, everyone, you know, I will definitely see you before Thanksgiving. We still got three shows at least to do. No, four. Maybe five. We have Saturday, Monday, Tuesday on Patreon, and probably Wednesday. So uh, it's four. Wait, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. Wow. Might be five straight days still. So good night, everybody. Be well. And I'll catch you all again Saturday. Be well. Take care. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a podcaster. For me to live any other way was nuts. To me, those goody good people who work shitty jobs for bum paychecks and took the subway to work every day and worried about their bills were dead. I mean, they were suckers. 
They had no balls. If I wanted something, I just tuck it. I ran everything. I paid the bills. I paid the hosts. I even paid the masked maniac. Everybody had their hands out. Everything was for the taking. We always called each other good fellas. You would always hear from somebody. You're gonna like Don Tony. He's all right. He's a good fella. He's one of us. But if you're part of my crew, nobody ever tells you they're gonna get rid of you. It doesn't happen that way. There weren't any arguments or curses like in the movies. See, your haters come with smiles. They come as your friends, the people who've claimed they care the most for your life. And now, now that's all over. And that's the best part. Today everything is different. There's lots of action. I don't have to wait around for everything like everyone else. Oh, I didn't get the vaccine? Fuck you, vaccine me. Oh, your delivery guy has COVID? Fuck you, feed me. Right after I moved here, I ordered egg noodles and ketchup. And I got spaghetti with meat sauce. I'm no longer an average nobody while they get to live the rest of their lives like a bunch of schnooks.